question for you. Are you a mom watching this video and you're desperately looking for more services for your child with autism? Well, I have some good news for you. Today, it's a lot easier to get services than it used to be. So I've been doing 12 years now in the field of autism, been working for 12 years in the field of autism. And when I first started, very, very few children got services. And I heard stories about the fact that years ago when the behavior protocols that we use today first came out, it was amazing and it was revolutionary in the field of autism, but it was almost impossible to get services. And I have the privilege to bring on today a mother who is a pioneer making services available to children like yours and like your family. If it wasn't for moms like the one I'm bringing on my call today, it wouldn't be possible for your child to have services. And I wouldn't be able to say that 12 years into this, that services are possible for every child if you know where to look. So it's a privilege and it's an honor to bring Irene Tansman on the call today. I'm so excited to have you, Irene, and I'm so excited to share with parents a little bit about your story, a little bit about your son and your journey and really helping make services accessible, not only for your son, but for every parent who's listening to this today. Welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you Jessica. I'm very happy to be here. No, it's really, it's my privilege. So I want to talk a little bit about when your son was diagnosed and, and you know, what emotions you were experiencing. I know it was right around the same time when ABA started. They announced, okay, ABA, 40 hours, your child can be cured. And every parent was seeking after services, you know, and yet there were no services. So talk a little bit about what that was like at that point. Well, well, ABA had been around for a while, but um, people were not getting uh, services at that point. Um, my, the book that I wrote, Amy and Arlene's Autism War, is um, based on my experiences, and particularly the experiences early in the book when I received his diagnosis. That's, that's pretty much based on my experience. Um, Nowadays, when somebody has, gets a diagnosis of autism for their child, they're going to get ABA right away. Um, I could not get that when he was first diagnosed. They were giving me one hour, could you believe it? One hour of early intervention a week. And that person had absolutely no idea about how to engage my son, how to, how to gain instructional control over him. Um, it was totally different than what uh, families experience now. Um, my feelings about the diagnosis is probably similar to what, um, what your, your families that you work with, probably the same thing, shock, it's upsetting, it's, a, but we, I knew right away that I had to get to work because I had to really do it myself because we didn't have what people have today. So, yeah, now there are a lot of services available today, but there's still a really big gap. And I know now New Jersey is where I'm practicing now. Now they have a family training model. So early intervention, it really is five hours a week. So not that big of a difference, especially when you look at the fact that you know, it's so much time has passed and 40 hours is still that gold standard. Now, when children in New Jersey, ironically, was the first state to actually mandate insurance coverage, now this is private insurance through a company to pay for autism, to pay for autism treatment, which was specifically ABA. Now, there's also still, though, a gap in many states where some states Medicaid will pay for it in some states, Medicaid will not pay for ABA. So New York was just passed actually last week. Now in New York, Medicaid will cover ABA, but in New Jersey, Medicaid doesn't cover ABA. So I find a lot of parents who are self-employed, a lot of parents who um, have Medicaid for their children, they don't receive, um, they don't receive insurance to their companies. There is still a big gap for children to get services. Now, services are more available and there's different ways that you can go about getting them. And I know that's a 
whole nother show. But what advice would you give to a mother who's looking for services today and is really like you? It feels like maybe they're stuck on a treadmill running in place and aren't getting anywhere. Well, I, I, I think that I live in Massachusetts, so um, the, the folks here, uh, whether they have private insurance or whether they have um, Medicaid, which we, we call it Mass Health here, um, they are getting ABA services. And this is the, I would consider this the biggest advance um, since when my son was young. Uh, my son's going to be 32. Um, this is this is what you want to happen. And I would, I would advise those families to fight really hard to get uh, that, um, e they call it EPSDT, early periodic screening, diagnosis and treatment. Medicaid is supposed to provide that, uh, but there are some certain states that aren't doing that. I think that, they, they, you know, that the parents should be really fighting very hard to make that happen because this will make a difference. Um, so yes, uh, if you can. Um, another another set, uh, advice that I would give them is to, you know, if there's a decision by Med Medicaid uh, not to, you know, they, they say, well, we're not providing ABA, the school should be providing it or whatever. Um, I would fight the insurance company and if the child is over age three, I would fight the school system to provide it. Um, if it's early intervention, I would fight for as many hours as you think that the child needs. Um, I, you know, I think that the intervention makes a big difference early on. But as I, as I explained in my book or tried to bring forth in my book, um, which is actually, the book is, based on my life, but it, it is actually a fiction book because it, it, it provides the point of view of my son who is lower functioning autism and cannot communicate well, and certainly cannot communicate as my character does in the book. So it's, it's fiction, it's what I think he's thinking at the time. And um, so, um, I try to bring forth in my book that, you know, even though we didn't get the right help at the right time, we had a big struggle with the schools and, you know, and he wasn't the miracle kid that you hear about. And, mm -hmm. and I wasn't, or my character wasn't the, the flawless mother that you, you might read about. And even though all of those things took place, we still had a happy ending. It still ended up okay. And that's what I want my, I, I, I think that the people watching, many of them are probably tearing their hair out. It's so hard to have a young child with autism. So very hard, you always feel like you're drowning. Um, but I think that, you know, things will get better. It's not gonna always, you're not gonna always feel like you're drowning or you're hanging by a thread. Oh, I forgot your original question. <laughs> That's okay. You know what? That was the perfect advice to give parents to to keep fighting and to keep really, you know, being the advocate for your child. I tell parents that all the time. You know, something simple like, okay, never go into an IEP meeting and sign the document before you leave. Always take it home. Always read it over. Always get more support. You know, always bring an advocate. And there are so many resources out there. And parents don't realize they don't have to just say yes to whatever that they're offered and that oftentimes it unfortunately still today in 2019 comes down to money and comes down to payment and comes down to who is gonna take responsibility, whether it's the school or the insurance or the health department, everyone wants to pass on responsibility, but it being your child's advocate, making sure they're getting what they need. You know, I think it's sad that today that parents are still forced to play that role when there's so many other things that you know, you're dealing with. And like you said, it's, yeah. it's not easy. And, you know, I'm very transparent on my calls and I'm very honest. You know, I look at sometimes what my families go through and I get to leave at the end of the day. I get to come home and, you know, sometimes I come home to a mess and Irene will tell you this podcast started late because I came home to my beautiful, wonderful 90 pound dog having a 
big pile of poop in his cage and and life happens for everyone but you know having a like like you said Irene like I can't imagine how hard it is as a practitioner and that's why I make these videos it's why I do these podcasts it's why I bring on these guests and I write the blog posts I do is I really want to help families and and you know it breaks my heart that some of the parents when I got to go home that they're still struggling with the same things we were working on when I was there and I do want to help any way that I can and you know being able even to speak with you Irene and, and someone who's gone through it it offers an insight to my parents, I mean, and your son and I are actually the same age. Um, and being able to offer that insight to my families of what it's like on that other side, knowing I can tell them, look, it's gonna get better, it's gonna be okay. And I was with a mother today and she was crying and I said, okay, like I know now it seems so hard and I can't promise you what the outcome's gonna be, but I promise you that it's not gonna be as hard as it is today every day. And me, it's easy for me to say, because I go home to an empty house, but it's um, a lot harder when you don't get to leave and you don't get to be out of that situation. So thank you so much right. for just coming right. on and just sharing uh, really an authenticity that you can speak from experience and you can speak and really know, okay, yes, it really does get easier. I think uh, my, my son is, you know, he's still very impaired. He, he did not, he was not cured. He lives in a group home. And he goes to a day program. He comes home practically every weekend. And we look forward to it. We have a wonderful time. Um, it is not a struggle. It's actually a joy. Um, and I think that there'll be people, there will be, you know, some of the families you're working with, there, some of them are going to be a success story. But most of them will, you know, It'll still be a success story. There'll still be improvements, but not everybody's going to be the miracle case. And that's why I wrote my book. Yeah, well, it's beautiful. And I, and I can't wait to read it. And I, um, I, I actually did order a copy. So it's on its way to my house. I'm excited to be able to read it and to support it. And I really want to hear your story. And thank you so much for um, coming on and sharing your message and your really vision for parents. So if you want to get um, the book, it's AB and Arlene's Autism War. There's a link in the description of this video. If you're watching this video on YouTube, there is a link. So you could just click right on it. It'll take you right to Amazon and you can order it there. And any Irene, if anyone wanted to reach out to you, what's the best way to do so if they had any questions for you? Well, I'm on Twitter at iTansman. Okay, awesome, thank you so much. And if you want to watch more of these videos, um, just like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I post videos every week. And like I said, it's really for me, um, I want to help you. I wanna help your family. I want to make your journey through autism easier. And I want your child to be as successful as possible. And like Irene said, every child has a different degree of what's possible for them, but it's about making sure whatever is possible for your child that, that he reaches his greatest potential. And that's why I make these videos for you. So thank you so much again, Irene. Thank you to anyone who listened in today. And I really look forward to seeing you guys again on the next video.